against Mohan. Yeah, do it faster. Yep. Yep. Yep, they're coming. Come on in, sit down. There you go. <laughs> yep. Yep, we can sing them in. We can sing them in. Gain and ten were bent, two were good. Gain and ten were bent, two were good. Some giants big and strong. Some were good. Okay, one more time. Yes. Faster. Yes. Faster. Okay. Well, we wouldn't have to say that they were good. Very good. Now what? What was the next one? Yes. We do it in school all the time. I bought some. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and sing uh, I'm in the Lord's Army, right? I'm going to teach you a new one, but let's go ahead and start off with the original, okay? Everybody know the original song to I'm in the Lord's Army. Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. All right. You want to take a trip to Mexico? All right, I may never take a trip to Mexico, ride a donkey oh so slow, eat a cheesy taco. I may never wear a big sombrero, but I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. I may never take a trip to Mexico, ride a donkey oh so slow, eat a cheesy taco. I may never wear a big sombrero, but I'm in the Lord's army. Si, senor. All right. So now we got either the Western or Native American. Which one do you want to do? Which one? Native American, here we go. Native American version of I'm in the Lord's Army. I learned this in South Dakota. This is important. This is the way they sing it. Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Woo, 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 woo. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I may never march 
Rush in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, here's the next new one. This is the one going to the moon. This is how this works. I may never take a trip to outer space, win in a rocket race, shoot a laser any place. I may never walk on the moon's face, but I'm in the Lord's army. You stick one thumb up, finger out, stick it in your ear and say, Roger, sir. Here we go. I may never zoom into outer space, win in the rocket race, shoot a laser any place. I may never walk on the moon's face, but I'm in the Lord's army. Roger, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Roger, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Roger, sir. I may never take a trip to outer space, win in a rocket race, shoot a laser any place. I may never walk on the moon's face, but I'm in the Lord's army. Roger, sir. All right, you may be seated. Thank you, guys. All right, I have another story that I'd like to share with you. Of course, these stories are actually made with real flannel graph. And instead of me carrying all those flannel graph with me, it's rather expensive. It was just a whole lot easier to take pictures of it and fix it up on PowerPoint. So today's story is the doll that grew. You know, Steve, he couldn't just go to the grocery store or to Walmart and buy himself a toy. He lived way out in the country. And so if he was going to have a toy at all, he would either have to make it or maybe somebody else made it. So he had the idea that in the worst way, he wanted a boat. And so he went down out in the back 40. He found himself a really nice log and some sticks. And he carved himself out the most beautiful boat you ever saw. He would go down to the stream and he would tie a string to it. And he would float it along the stream. He just really enjoyed his toy boat. Well, one day, his sister, Hope, came to her mom and said, Mom, Steve has a boat. Could I please have a doll? And uh, she said, I just want a doll in the worst way. And every day she said, Mom, will you please make me a doll? And so finally, after several weeks of begging and pleading, Mom had an idea. She went off into the linen closet and she pulled out an old pillowcase. She took that pillowcase and she set it on the table. And then she got an old gingerbread boy cookie cutter and she laid it on that and she drew it as big as she could on that fabric. And then she cut it out, sewed it all together until she got to the top of the head. And she went out into the storage shed and she got a, a big bag of dried out corn. She poured it into that doll and then she sewed up the head. She put some hair on him drew a face, and guess what? It was the most ugly doll you ever saw. But Hope loved that doll. That doll went everywhere with Hope. She, she took it to breakfast, lunch, and supper. She went to bed with it. She, she even took it swinging every day. I mean, she loved that doll. So one day, Steve was working on his boat. And as he's working on his boat on the kitchen table, Hope came running through and knocked Steve's boat right onto the floor. And it crashed to pieces. Hope just ran out the door, and you know, Steve was so disappointed. She said, he said, I am going to ask my sister to apologize. She broke my boat. So Steve comes along and says, Hope, you broke my boat. And Hope said, ah, oh, that's just a stupid old boat anyway. And she walked out the door. Well, of course, Steve went into the other room and he sat down. And as he's sitting there on the floor, his thoughts were nothing but happiness, joy, peace, and long-suffering, right? No. His thought was, 
Revenge! She broke my boat. She destroyed it. I need to get back at her. So Hope, everywhere she went, she took her doll with her. But one day as Steve came into the living room, he noticed that Hope's doll was sitting there on the couch. And so he wondered, well, I wonder where Hope is. He looks out the back door and no Hope, looks out the front door, and there's Hope swinging on the swing set without her doll. So if Hope out the front door, where do you think Steve went? He grabbed a hold of that doll and he ran out the back door. He ran over to the storage shed and he pulled himself out a nice big shovel and he ran out as far as he could, way past the garden, and he starts digging a hole. <laughs> Sweet, re she broke my bow. He's digging a nice deep, is that deep enough? No, he digs it nice and deep. He, he takes that doll, he lays it down in the ground and he starts covering it up, oh boy. She broke my boat. Is that good enough? No. <laughs> Piles it all down there, and he takes off. And Dad always said, when you borrow my tools, make sure you put them back. So he took the tool back to the storage shed, put it in the storage shed, ran to the home. And just as he was coming through the back door, he heard Mom call, time for supper. So right away, Steve, he goes, washes his hands, goes to the dining room table, sits down, and he's ready to eat. And as they get ready to pray, Hope is saying, where's my doll? And, and Mom says, well, I think you just left it on the couch. I know, but it's not there. I, I can't find it. And Hope was running all around the house, and finally Mom says, Hope, don't worry about it. We will get it later. And so they sit down at the table. They have a word of prayer together, and all the time that they're eating, Hope is going, where's my doll? I can't find my doll. I can't find, where, where, where's my, and Steve's over there in the corner. <laughs> I got her. She broke my boat. Well, all day goes by, and Hope is looking everywhere. And now it's time to go to bed. And so Hope's searching everywhere. She's looking under the couch, in the couch, looking in the refrigerator, looking out the back door, the front door. She can't find her doll anywhere. And Mom says, it's time to go to bed. But Mom, I can't find my doll. Well, Mom says, oh, don't worry about it. We, we will find it tomorrow. And Steve's just kind of in the background. <laughs> oh, boy, it's a gutter now. I got her. So that night, they're trying to go to sleep. And Steve, the Lord was working in his heart. You know, Steve, you shouldn't have stole that doll. You know, be sure your sin will find you out. But Steve, he just keeps thinking, and he jumps into bed as Hope is lying there trying to go to sleep. And so Steve is there, he's getting ready to go to sleep, and, and he hears his sister mumbling, where's my doll? I can't find my doll. And the later it got, the louder it got, I can't find my doll, where's my doll? And Steve's in bed, oh boy, got her this time, she broke my boat. Well, days continue to go on, and the Lord keeps working in Steve's heart. Have you ever had that? You know, the Lord just kind of working in his heart, saying, you know, Steve, you should go grab that doll, dig it back up, bring it back to mom, and, and tell him what you did. But Steve thought, you know, the doll's going to be all dirty, and, and you know, mom's going to, the first thing she's going to ask is, why is it all dirty? And I, I have no, I, I can't explain all that. And so here's Steve, he hides it in his heart, keeps it hidden, and uh, as the days go by, it's raining, and it's sunny, and beautiful days, and Finally, one day, Mom goes out to check the garden. And as she goes out there to check the garden, way past the garden where nothing was planted, she saw something really, really peculiar. As she was looking at that, she kind of turned her head this way, and she turned her head this way, and all of a sudden, she got an idea. It sounded like this. Out here and so Steve comes running out mom whoa, whoa, what's going on and mom says what's that and you know what Steve said it's corn I know it's corn well look at the shape of it and Steve finally had to admit that he buried hope's dog you know be sure your sin will find you out
Because that's just the way sin is. Sin's a trap. It leads to death. And the only means of freedom to be set free from the bonds of our sin is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Steve's sin is just a result of the sinful heart. The question today is, what have you done with Christ? Do you know your sins are forgiven? Are you sure that you're born again and bound for heaven? Sin only leads to death. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God today and for the hope that we have in Christ. Father, I pray each one here today will realize the awful price of sin, that they'll choose to trust in Christ and Christ alone. And Father, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so now I think it's time to go home. No, there is something. Oh, that's right. There is something else, isn't there? So we need, we need, uh, yeah, somebody, yeah, a pie. Did anybody make a pie? Oh, there's nobody here to make a pie. Does Cynthia know where, you know where everything is? Refrigerator? Okay. Yep. So, Brother Tuck's going to come. <laughs> Who won? Oh, I know. I know. Can I show Nancy that $100 bill? <laughs> Have a, huh? Afterwards. Oh, no, I want to show it right now. I know, but when I show her right now, then she'll know. Right? I think, I think it'll be the Hello. most effective. Hello, can you hear me? Dave, you're Morse code for eight. All right, I want to, first of all, I just got to, it was a little lopsided tonight, I was kind of sad because thanks to Chuck, you know, Chuck, I just want to, I want to give Chuck special, special uh, 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 salutation thanks, yeah, for the, because he, he threw $100 in the Kevin's bucket, so, it just, <clears throat> unfortunately, it was a bill with Chuck's uh, picture on it. It was a uh, hundred chuck bucks. <laughs> so, but it, I was still sad because it was really lopsided tonight. Unfortunately, Mrs. Cash got forty-nine dollars and sixty-seven cents. Mr. Cash, you only got twenty dollars and nine cents. So, it, I don't know how that works when you run around forcing everybody to put money in your bucket. So, but that's all right. We're going to, oh, but we're bringing the big guns tomorrow, right? Yeah. So that's all right. We're bringing, we're bringing the big bucks. We're bringing the big guns tomorrow, the big bucks. Yeah? Yeah. Big, big bucks, no whammy. No whammy. Yeah, not on you. No fakies. Hey, Dana. How, how are you? Can you hear me? Okay, did you hear my Morse code? I was saying, hey, Dana, how are you, Dana? <laughs> I, my Morse code. Are, are, are you all right, brother? Okay, all right. How are how you doing tonight? Did you hear the story of the doll that grew? Did you hear 
Pastor Sokot's story? Oh, okay. So I thought I'd scream this one. The two goats don't have a sign. Well, yeah, if somebody messed up. It's probably me again. I forgot about the pie part. So we're gonna we're getting one together tomorrow night. Uh, it'll be Nancy's turn, and we're gonna get a really big special pie tomorrow for Nancy. So it'll be it'll be Nancy it'll be Nancy tomorrow. Molly, we Molly was disqual Molly was disqualified from offering tonight. She won't be able to put anything in the plate tomorrow. So. And Sienna, Molly and Sienna are both disqualified. So, oh, I wish to have money. So yeah, in the other bucket. No, it's with all going for a good cause. That's how we're we're paying for all the treats and stuff. So. Doing real good, too, because they're 